Hello everyone, James from Jay's 3D Adventure here uh, and today's video which is part of my D-Bot uh, 3D printer build uh, we're going to be having a look at everything to do with the print surface and obviously the print bed um, so let me just reposition the camera and we'll have a look at what we're going to do Okay, so uh, I've repositioned the camera just so you can see the whole of the depot uh, and the, the build area. So this is my uh, aluminium or aluminium tool plate, um, and it's basically a big thick slab of aluminium which has been machined on both sides to be incredibly flat. Um, and what we're going to do is basically mark and drill, I, I've actually already done it, but I'm going to show you how I marked and drilled um, the, the bed uh, mounting points. So basically what I did is I took the aluminium sheet or aluminium plate um, and laid it basically onto the print bed frame um, and then basically lined everything up so it was completely square on both sides um, and then actually with a biro with the just the ink part of the biro um, I came up through the bed um, adjustment supports on the frame here um, and just marked a little mark on the underside of the aluminium so basically I did that so that I knew that all the holes were going to be in the same place rather than or in the in the same place relation to each other rather than sort of trying to measure from the top and mark and drill and then find everything's off so what I then did is took the aluminium plate um, and just again made sure that the the marks were visible much clearer um, and then drilled a hole all the way through on the drill press with a spoil board underneath um, and I would advise if you're going to do this is to definitely do it on a drill press because then you know that the drill bit is going to be coming down straight um, and square so I drilled four holes all the way through now the problem that I've got and which I probably should have realized when I ordered the, the plate is that Although this is bigger than 300 millimeters, which is the build volume, um, obviously the bolts that I'm using to hold down the, the print bed will get in the way. So what I actually have done is countersunk the holes. So um, let me just get a, a bolt here. So this is the bolt that's going to be used. And when it's in the hole, it's actually completely flush with the top. So what I can do is mount this with the, the bolts, the springs and the adjusters um, and then whatever I choose to have as a build surface on top will not be interfered by bolts. So yeah that was quite an easy, easy task to do really just with the correct size drill bits um, and obviously the drill press has a, a stop so that stops you from drilling too far down um, and obviously having a too big a hole or a, th a thin hole where your bolt's going to go through. Um, let me just see if I can get a better picture of this. So that should allow you to see, hopefully, um, the hole and the countersink. Let me just put that bolt back in. I'll see if I can get a much closer shot. There we go. So that's what the bolt looks like when it's in the aluminium plate. Um, so then what you have is a spring goes on this side then it goes into the bed adjuster. So we have that on all four corners. The next um, thing to think about with the bed is obviously how we're going to heat it. So 
I was initially going to use the heated bed from my printer bot. Um, that's a PCB heater, um, and as it turns out, it's not. It's far less than even 250 millimeters square, so I don't think I was going to get enough temperature into the aluminium plate. So that for that reason, I have got hold of a, a 12 bolt 300 by 300 silicon heat pad, um, and this was from Ooze Nest, uh, the same place that the aluminium frame come from, uh, and there'll be links in the description. So this heat pad basically doesn't have any um, adhesive on or anything at the moment. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But what I'm going to have to do is just ever so slightly um, take a nick out of the holes. And if I hold this up to the, the thing, you'll be able to see that um, it will ever so slightly sort of overlap the hole. So what I'm going to do is just take a bit of the silicon heat pad off and hopefully the, the pad will still work. So yeah, so I've actually tested um, a smaller version of this pad and it gets inc really incredibly warm quite quickly. So I'm quite happy with um, the performance I'm going to get out of the heat pad as opposed to a PCB heater. Now to stick the aluminium pad onto, or sorry, the silicon pad onto the aluminium plate, I've got hold of some of this, which, let me see if I can get this in focus. There we go. So this is silicon red um, high temperature adhesive. So what I'm hoping to do is basically stick the pad to the aluminium with this. Um, so that will basically bond the two together. Now the original, my original plan for print surface um, was actually a sheet of, let me see if I can find it. So I got this from Kickstarter when it was on Kickstarter. Um, and this is a sheet of lock build. So this is a 300 by 300 sheet of lock build. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to use it just yet, only because um, I don't want to stick this directly to the aluminium sheet. I either want to, um, again, go with some sort of flexible build plate like I made for the printer bot, or I'm just going to play around with a piece of glass on the aluminium. Um, I had a glass bed on one of my older printers before and I got really good results with PLA it just stuck without even any adhesive or anything so that's the plan at the moment what I'm going to do is off camera is I'm going to get this PCB uh, this silicon heat pad ready and stuck to the aluminium uh, and we'll have a look at that in a second okay so hello everyone welcome back um, so for you it's been a couple of seconds, for me it's been a couple of days, um, but what I've done is basically bonded the uh, silicon pad to the bottom of the aluminium plate um, and I, like I said in the previous video I used high temperature silicon adhesive, uh, it's the sort of thing they use in um, car engines and automotive stuff. So I'm hoping that that is going to keep that stuck down to the aluminium sheet. Uh, and then what I've also done is just where I've needed to is I've just sort of took the corner off the silicon sheet. Um, and that, if, you, if I get it in the right light, I can see sort of where the tracks go for the heating element. So that should be absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mount this back on the printer um, and we can have a look and see how that all sets up. Okay, so as you can see I've mounted the aluminium plate with the silicon heater on the bottom to, to the D-Bot frame um, and that's just connect, uh, secured in each corner with 
a bolt, a spring, and then into the bed leveling mechanism. Um, what I'll actually do is um, take the camera off the tripod and give you a closer look. So if I just zoom this out a bit, you can see on this corner how the bed, there we go, is joined to the frame. So we've got here um, a bed leveller should we need it, although this is obviously going to be levelled with the BL touch or the 3D touch in this case. Um, and yeah, so that's the same on each corner. And if we have a look underneath, uh, let's do it on this corner. I can get a good shot. You can see that the spring does indeed miss the silicon heater. Um, so the, yeah, that's the the bed installed. Obviously, the next um, thing now is to basically decide how we're going to wire up the heated bed. Um, the plan is to use one of these, which is a solid state relay. Um, and I've got a couple of different style ones that I'm going to try out. Um, I've used this one before on another printer, so I know it works. Um, the plan is to use two power supplies, I think I've said, for this printer. Um, let me just set the camera up and we'll and I'll talk to you that way. So yeah, so the plan is um, basically to have two power supplies, one for the bed uh, and one for everything else basically. So the bed is going to have a dedicated, um, I think it's 400-450 watt ATX power supply um, and then I'm either going to use uh, this I think they call them um, LED power supplies for everything else or I'm going to have another ATX power supply because I've got quite a few of them sitting around. Um, so yeah that's the plan to power everything on the, the D-Bot. Um, so I'll get a bit further with that um, and then in the next video we'll take a look at all the wiring so I'm going to actually install the um, extruder as well because um, I've got to run some extensions for the hot end and everything so I'll get all that wired up and then in the next video uh, we'll have a look how everything's wired together so until next time thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe um, and keep on printing <laughs>